Good morning. This is Bill from Monte Europa Naples, and today I have um, today I have this thing. Uh, this is um, okay. Well, look. Let's you know during my automotive career, I've had the good fortune or misfortune of driving some pretty strange and unusual stuff. I, I've driven some. You know, some Citroen, some DS21, some Du Chevaux. I've driven pin scours, these, uh, you know, Austrian military vehicles. I even once drove a pink 911, which was one of the most uh, unpleasant little experiences that I've had. But this one really kind of takes the cake. It's like, okay, well, all right, well, let me get into the story. I have a story. Believe it or not, there is a story that is actually going to make sense out of this. And uh, it all begins in the Philippines, as you can see from the front license plate there. Uh, the front license plate that, by the way, hangs from chains. Uh, in the Philippines, of course, the United States had a military presence. And when they did, they had a bunch of military vehicles. And amongst those military vehicles were a bunch of Willys Jeeps. Uh, you know, the old flat fender, the one Klinger used to drive around in on MASH. Uh, there were a bunch of those things over there. And they became a Filipino status symbol. So uh, if you're a private citizen in the Philippines, you end up with a Willys Jeep, you're driving that thing around, uh, then you are one, you know, hot dude or gal. I mean, that is what the uh, the cool, the elite, uh, you know, you're going to Starbucks in your uh, Willys. That, that is what those people drove. Unfortunately, and now we've got wind noise, I'm sure. Uh, but unfortunately, the Philippines does not have a climate conducive to old uh, military vehicles. So uh, most of those Jeeps just turned to powder. Uh, so a demand was there and a supply was not. And what happened is, well, the, what you see in front of you, they started stamping bodies, hand stamping bodies out of stainless steel. Uh, in fact, I believe Ferdinand Marcos had a couple of these things and Imelda driving around with her shoes in the back. Uh, so this thing was a real Philippine status symbol. And there's, you know, at one point apparently there were a bunch of companies in Manila, uh, you know, stamping out these stainless steel Jeeps. And one made it here. At least this one made it here. And here it is. And now I have it. And I have to tell you that, frankly, this is probably the most ridiculous vehicle that I've ever had to operate. Uh, it gives me the kind of attention I don't like. I'm not one of those guys that likes driving old collectible cars and having people wave at you and give you the thumbs up and whatnot. I just don't like that. It's just not my thing. Uh, you know, you drive an old Cobra replica, somebody can, hey, is that a real one? Well, you know, no. Obviously, I'm not driving my seven-figure Cobra uh, you know, to the 7-Eleven parking lot to get some coffee. Uh, you know, ditto my Speedster replica or whatever you want to talk. I just, again, I like a low profile. I want the windows up, the air on, sunglasses, hat, collars up. And if I can just be alone, that makes me the happiest. So as you can imagine, being out and on display in this rolling Frigidaire uh, with no side view mirrors is just a bit terrifying to me in a way that uh, I don't like to talk about. And I already know that I've got the ride uh, back to work ahead of me. So anyway, okay, well, look, here are the things that I can say about this. Uh, some obvious benefits. The first obvious benefit is that it's not going to rust. Uh, that we know. I mean, this thing is, again, a rolling stainless refrigerator. Uh, and, and second, uh, you know, man, does my tip of the hat to the poor bastard out there with all the little brass hammers uh, who put this thing together in the form of a Jeep. I mean, I'm sure there must have been some, you know, machine work at hand, but... I mean, so much of this thing has been stamped out, and the poor guy probably got like six sesame seeds a week to make it. Um, you can see it has a diamond plate floor, uh, this absolutely bizarre, uh, you know, steering column. The, the running gear from this thing is apparently a Suzuki Vitara, so uh, it does have pretty bulletproof running gear. It's also two-wheel drive, so, you know, I don't know if you're going to be doing any heavy-duty four-wheeling. Maybe it's more of a beach cruiser, but... Um, I find myself speechless. 
All right, look, let's start in here. Where is that obvious benefit? So we got stainless, we got good running gear. Uh, we got the craftsmanship, if you will, of some poor little guy who stamped this thing out. Uh, let me get this up. Try not to smash the windshield doing it. Okay, so there it is. Uh, Suzuki Vitara running gear. Uh, you can see it's all been very nicely uh, bolted in there. Uh, with the one exception, it feels like they bolted it directly to the frame because it does vibrate your fillings out while you're just sitting at a stoplight. But uh, otherwise, that's uh, obviously one of these bulletproof uh, you know, Suzuki third world motors that, uh, you know, just goes and goes and goes and goes. Uh, it looks a lot like the, uh, the uh, motor in my little Miata, which, you know, lives at 7,000 RPM and never dies. So, um, you know, there it is. Great running gear. Good craftsmanship. I had to say great craftsmanship. I mean, incredible that some little bastard put all this together. But, um, oh my God. All right, let me get that back down. Get these clamped on. I mean, wait, there's even little polished parts sort of designed into it. I mean, somebody just put so much love into this thing. And it was obviously stylized after the, uh, uh, those, uh, I can't remember what Jeep, the ones with the square headlights that nobody likes. So, uh, anyway, they must, uh, you know, had those around when this body was getting made. Uh, underneath this little diamond plate cutout is the battery, uh, with this inexplicably long frame and the big, push uh, chrome bumper at the front you can see it has some falcons on the american outlaw uh, wheels there it is a full frame piece from what i can see i have no idea to be honest with you if it's a, a vitara chassis or not or if it's a custom built chassis uh, i really just don't have a clue uh, i'll try to get the phone under there you make your own guess there it is you can see that little gas door the uh, you know, pull handles there at the back, a limited edition badge. That is the truth. Uh, you're not going to probably run into another one of these if you're driving around. Uh, you can see the uh, incredible sort of uh, craftsmanship on this homemade roll bar. You know, all the welds, the way they curve around. Uh, I don't know if that's painted or powder coated, but it looks pretty indestructible. Uh, you got some pull handles over here. <sighs> I mean, I just don't know what I can say about this thing. It's weird. It's really, really weird. And as you're driving it around, I can promise you people are going to check you out. Now, these doors that it has in here are a bit of a... Uh uh, a bit of a psych out because they don't actually fit. Now the top in there does apparently fit. It is supposed to go on, although I haven't tried it, so I'm not confirming it yet. But uh, the doors are from a CJ7 or something that someone was gonna modify to make work on this thing and just never did. So uh, they come with it, but uh, you know, as to making them work, that's up to you. I will try the top and let you know. Uh, also that little bag of stuff over there that I'm afraid to open up. I don't even know what's gonna be in there. Uh, it has uh, Natami seats made to envy, uh, you know, real trailer style taillights on it. Uh, here you see they're pretty comfy seats for being kind of big, uh, you know, faux racing seats with the uh, Natami harnesses there to make it street legal, sort of, I guess. Uh, doesn't appear to have any side view mirrors. Uh, this windshield does fold down Willie's Jeep style. Let's give that a go. This is all going to be hard one-handed, but you got to see it. I'm going to use this handle here to, of course, yeah, of course it doesn't go. Of course it hangs up while I'm trying to do the damn thing. All right, there it is. Uh, that thing is heavy. Oh, boy. Okay, so there you see the, uh, the, the windshield folded down. Now you can get bugs in your teeth at speed. Uh, I don't see any kind of rubber stoppers there, so I would probably want to install something before I went driving with it. Otherwise, you're going to be bouncing that windshield around the hood. But uh, again, if you want the most unique uh, beach vehicle on the planet, well, you know, maybe not the planet. There's probably 50 of these things running around the Philippines right now, maybe 5,000. Uh, but I guarantee you there's not many in the United States, so you can definitely stand out here. Uh, but anyway, there it is, the uh, windshield down. Um, you can see even even to the point that somebody ran electric into the mirror, you know, through the bars. I mean, you want to talk about somebody who spent some time on this thing. Uh, over here, you've got uh, uh, presumably the gauge cluster from the uh, Vitara. you got a couple of 12-volt outlets. you got a very angry-looking skull thing with swords going through it, staring at your passenger. Uh, you've got one cup holder, so... Only one of you at a time can have a drink. There's some kind of a digital clock in there. Uh, you've got stalks for, you know, your headlights and your 
wipers. Uh, I don't even see any wipers. You've got a structural uh, set of zip ties there. You got some hazard switches. They're working. Something's flashing. And uh, of course, your five speed shifter here, your e brake. And look at, I mean, all this craftsmanship in this thing is absolutely amazing. Uh, again, it was probably built for Ferdinand Marcos by people who would be killed if it didn't work out. Ow, god damn it, that hurt. There's also a uh, VIN tag there, which I haven't run to know what this thing is, but it does, you know, have a Florida title. So presumably in your redder states, this thing is going to be pretty easy to register. If you're in Massachusetts, don't even bother. Everything's illegal in Massachusetts. This thing will never get through. Uh, I shouldn't say. Yeah, probably. Anyway, I wouldn't try. But, uh, you know, if, uh, if AR-15s are popular in your state, then this thing might work. Uh, anyway, we're going to go for a spin, and to do that, I'm going to switch cameras to the 35mm uh, that I photograph with. I don't like usually videoing with that because it has a weird look, but I know I'm going to get wind noise in this particular vehicle. So uh, let me put it on pause. We're going to switch over to the other camera, and God help me, we're going for a drive. All right, so hopefully we're filming. It's hard for me to see the back of the camera without my glasses, but uh, uh, anyway, I believe we are. Um, I don't know. Let me get my glasses on. I don't know if I see the counter moving. 43 minutes. Record. So, yeah, okay, we're recording. All right, so there it is. So here is the thing. It's got the windshield back up, and uh, we're going to hop in and drive it. Now, I can tell you getting in this thing is really, really... Yeah, well, it's easy and hard because getting over the edge is fine. Getting under the steering wheel is hard. And as you can see, your knees kind of go up to the side of the wheel, making it very easy to drive with your knees. But otherwise, it kind of imperils some of your nether regions. Oh, God. All right. Anyway, clutch in. Fires up. Nope. Quit oh, yeah, it's running. It's that quiet. Uh, we're going to go over into first. And off we go. <laughs> All right. So again, very, very strange sort of driving position. I think it suits middle guys better. Oh, Jesus. All right, hang on. There we go. All right, this is obviously not that easy to do while holding a camera, uh, but you get the idea. It actually goes down the road fairly well. Uh, you know, again, it does have some kind of full frame. It does have Japanese running gear uh, that seems to be quite uh, reliable or certainly, um, you know, enjoys being run. Hang on, they're back in third. The steering is actually quite fine. Uh, you know, there's no vibration or anything. It in no way feels homemade. So, obviously, they've done a very, very good job of transplanting uh, that Vitara running gear to whatever you want to call this thing. second so um, again the steering is fairly precise uh, it goes exactly where you point it the brakes feel pretty good there's no pull they you know stop nice and proper and uh, of course you do get all that vibration but some of that is because the top thing in the back isn't secured very properly Oop, missing gears Anyway, you get the point, and I'm not going to keep doing this and punishing you and me. Uh, this is, uh, it's, it's apparently registered as a 2000. I really don't know what it is or when it was built. I don't know the model. It's a Jeep of some sort. Uh, it's made out of stainless steel. It runs good. It's weird as hell. And your neighbors are going to think you completely lost your mind if you show up in it. So there's another benefit for you. Uh, if you have an interest and... In, I'm honestly not sure that I want to talk to you if you do. Uh, give us a call, 239-649-7300, on the web at mercedesexpert.com. Uh, ask for Richard or Travis. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for having a look. We really appreciate it, and we will see you at the next one. Take care.